evening. We're going to get started now, and uh, our bishop is here with us to bring greetings and open us in prayer. We thank you for being here. Bishop. Hey, uh, welcome to everybody tonight. Thank you for being here and taking some time out. Normally, we would do this in person. In some respects, I find this to be perhaps to be uh, somewhat more convenient and more available for, for more people. So I appreciate you taking time and setting it aside for this important work that we do together. Let's say a word that uh, the transition uh, from one pastor to the next pastor is so important in terms of the strength uh, and the effectiveness of your next pastor. And so that the work that the laity do and you as leaders in the staff parish relations committees of our conferences, of our churches in our conference, are just vital to making this happen. So, uh, of course, I know that you'll find other ways. Jim Mosier later will talk about this, I'm sure, in which you can, you can connect with your new pastor and how you will do that. But uh, uh, I know that um, during this season that is very different from any other point in this season or time in the life of the church, at least in my lifetime, that uh uh, that uh, everybody's um, commitment and faith and uh, uh, gratitude for the reception of a new pastor is, is very important. And of course, how you say goodbye is important as well. And I know that, uh, that you'll do that well, but thank you for being here. I'm going to be with you for a few minutes. I'm not going to be here for the, uh, for, uh, for the whole time. So it's, uh, I have another commitment this evening as well uh, via Zoom because it is my preferred method of meeting, not really, but it's the only method we've got right now. I now am executive platinum on Zoom. I want y'all to know that. I was able to achieve that status in a very short time. Anyway, it's good to be with y'all tonight. And Bishop, will you uh, open us in prayer as well? Let us pray. Holy God, we're grateful for these who've gathered this evening. We ask your special blessings on congregations who will be saying goodbye to their pastor and also greeting a new pastor in just a few short weeks. Oh God, we'll do this in a time of transition, in a time of uh, an unsettled time in terms of when we will be able to gather in the way in which we had, we had once been accustomed to. But at least during this time, we know that you'll be able to help us find a significant new and creative ways in order to continue to be in ministry together. Uh, so for Jim's presence with us this evening, I indeed want to offer a blessing of gratitude for him and his work that he'll be doing with us this evening. And of course, we ask your blessings upon all those who are gathered here and their churches that they represent. For it's the name of the Christ I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that and appreciate you being here with us, uh, Bishop. And now I'm going to turn over to the mission coordinator for the Center for Church Development, who has worked hard in organizing this evening for us tonight, uh, Liliana Rangel, and she's going to be sharing some of our logistics as well as some of the resources with you. Liliana? Hi, friends. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining us this evening. I wanted to remind you just a few things to consider. Uh, one thing I wanted to let you know that this uh, meeting is being recorded. So if your lay people are not able to join, I know a couple pastors uh, shared with me that some of their lay people were not able to join. We will record this and we will have it on our website so that we can make it available to you. On the chat function, if you see at the bottom of your screen where you see chat, you can open up that chat function. And if you have any questions that come up while Jim is presenting, put those in there. Um, we, I will figure out if we need to stop and ask him those questions or towards the end, we will be able to ask him those questions as well. Uh, you could just go ahead and put your questions in the chat function. And I am uploading the workbook. Uh, Jim will be talking uh, and going through a workbook and I will throw it into the chat box if you want to download it and go through it if you have it on your in your hands I sent that earlier uh, yesterday if you have it great um, and also it'll be in the chat function and that's it I'll get back to Owen thank you Liliana and uh, I originally had went through this passing the baton course when I was leaving Christ Foundry the church that I planted to become the director for the Center of Church Development. And there was one statement that Jim shared that just haunted me. Jim said that uh, as much as the United Methodist Church has pastoral transitions, we should be the best at it. The data shows that we are not, that we don't do transitions well, that when data has shown that a church can actually grow in transitions, so many of our churches do not. 
And the resources that I received in that transition was so helpful to me and was so helpful in that pastoral transition that we, we did at Christ Foundry. Uh, when I assumed this role and I said, we need to do this for every church in the North Texas Conference every time we have a pastoral transition because it is a great resource. And having Jim uh, lead it is especially a gift because he knows our churches. He's, he served on the cabinet of the North Texas Conference. He served a number of our churches um, and has been a, a real leader in our conference and is real connected to so many of our churches uh, through his work with Healthy Church Initiative and his other work through his work in uh, being my predecessor. So we have a real gift for having him be with us tonight, and uh, both as one of our own from being from the North Texas Conference, as well as being a nationwide sought after expert on pastoral transitions. And so Jim, um, on behalf of North Texas Conference, on behalf of the cabinet of North Texas Conference, we thank you. We thank you for doing this. Uh, and we are honored to be having you here tonight. And so with that, I'll turn it over to you, Jim. Thanks. Thanks so much, Owen and, and Liliana and, and Bishop and others. Uh, this is so much fun for me tonight. And then Thursday, I'll be visiting with the pastors. Uh, and to, but the reason it's so much fun is I, I know many of you and I know your churches. Uh, often when I'm doing these, I don't know anybody. And so uh, it's just, I feel kind of like I'm at home. Um, and uh, so I just want to say, relax. We're going to be together uh, uh, about a little over an hour. Hopefully we'll have some time for question and answers at the end. Um, and I, I kind of want to just set the stage what I hope to accomplish. And I'll be checking in regularly with uh, Owen to make sure uh, I'm on target. And if I'm not uh, through the chat, he can just tell me and redirect uh, where he'd like for me to go. So before I get started, let me just say um, what I'm presenting to you, uh, there, tonight you're not gonna hear uh, any theory. These are best practices that we know work, especially in the age of COVID-19. I work with a number of churches uh, that have already gotten started in the changeover zone, passing the baton. Uh, they got started because uh, they were uh, churches in other places, their, their pastor was retiring, they had a little bit of a head start, and then COVID-19 hit. And so they had, to, uh, they had to change everything that we had talked about them doing. And I'm going to share with you some of their best practices that they're using to hopefully uh, stimulate your own creativity. So um, because these are best practices from around the country, we know they work, but uh, look, they may not work for you or in your setting. And that's fine. Um, so if they don't work, that's fine with me. Uh, my goal isn't to get uh, each one of you to, uh, to buy into everything I might lift up as a suggestion, but rather that um, when you uh, participate tonight, it will stir your own creativity. And you can write this word down if you've got a place to write, please. The most important word of the webinar, intentionality. We just want to be intentional, especially during this age of COVID-19 and, of course, with what's going on in our country right now. Um, and I, uh, because I can't know each one of you uh, and I can't know all of your settings and all of your situations, just let me ask for your forgiveness in advance. Uh, if anything I say during this webinar makes it sound like I think I know more about your church and what you should be doing than you do, uh, I don't. Here's my hope, though, that my experience working with hundreds of churches, many very similar to yours, and your experience being your church at this unique moment in history with its own particular uh, context, that together tonight we can come up with some ways to have a real plan of action for your church to say goodbye to your current pastor and hello to your new pastor. Uh, so also, since I, I can't know uh, all of your settings and situation, and I'll be kind of painting with a broad brush this evening, um, be, uh, Owen has arranged this, so uh, uh, because you've registered for this, uh, you're entitled to uh, one a free a Zoom consultation with your SPR committee, uh, with me uh, later, uh, just to address any specific issue and concern that you might have that I might not get to tonight. 
and Owen or Liliana can tell you how to contact me and, and, and how, to, uh, how to reach me. Uh, before I even start talking about the workbook and our process though, uh, I just wanna take a moment having spent many years in the North Texas conference and uh, feeling like this conference and these churches you all made me who I am today, molded me in ministry. And, and I just wanna say well, you are passing the baton in the weirdest, strangest, most difficult time. And all of us um, are, we're, we're cloaked in anxiety about the future. Uh, we have so many questions, not only about COVID-19, but also just about um, what's going on in our world today. And our hearts are really, uh, I'm sure, are just heavy as heavy. So while what I'm sharing with you tonight, I think is very, very important, and, I, and I'm sure it is for your churches, I, I don't want it for a minute to make it sound like it's more important than the current reality that all of you are dealing with right now. Can I get an amen? And let me just say, uh, while you are all, uh, uh, I, I don't know your particular setting, I'm sure some of you are just um, uh, just so excited about getting your new pastor. Some of you may be uh, not so excited about losing your current pastor. Uh, you've got such a host of emotions and perspectives uh, that I can't possibly know. But I do know this, having served on the cabinet for seven years, uh, you, the bishop and your cabinet have done as the absolute best they can do to try to make good matches. And I'd just like for you, would you mind just a thumbs up or a wave to the bishop and say, hey, thank you. This, can you imagine being a bishop in these times? And just let him know that you appreciate it. And then uh, Bishop, could I ask you if, real quick, because I don't keep up with all the conference stuff. Uh, so what, what is the current uh, plan now in the North Texas Conference in regard to starting date for churches? When can churches begin to uh, gather together in their uh, facilities, that kind of thing? Would you, would you mind just... I don't mind talking about that briefly. So I need to tell you, this is, this is not, we don't have a target date yet. We've been, uh, we've been open with the, both the East and the Northwest districts, simply because of sizes, size of churches and being able to social distance easily. Some of those about being able to begin to gather for worship, provided that all the protocols are met. We, we know that, uh, that some of our larger churches in that district may have some challenge about meeting the protocols simply because of social distancing. We're still watching the numbers uh, in, in what I would call the Dallas area, which includes not only Dallas County, but uh, Denton and Collin County and Rockwall. Some, thinks we should, some people think we should use Coughlin County as well. To determine that, we're, um, we're still, it, they, they keep moving on us. We think we're going down and then they started back up. So we want to get a period of time in which we feel like it, your, your people are going to be safe. And what I want to say, and I've said this to a couple of people at a, something the other day, and we want all of our clergy to be safe too. It's not like we're asking them to uh, put themselves and their families at risk at this time. And I know that you understand that. So our whole goal has been to do no harm either to people who gather for worship or, or clergy families as well. We may be close. I don't know that. We're going we're gonna to do a little um, visiting about that tomorrow. And our largest membership churches that worship our largest number of people every Sunday have said that they will probably open later or just very slowly in order to accommodate people because they will not be able to social distance in the ways in which, we, which uh, are preferable. Um, um, anyway, so that's where we are. Uh, there are ways in which things can happen. We now have uh, the musicians in the conference have, been, have started to be very clear that uh, in terms of music or congregational song, that may be out for a time even. And I know that sounds strange, but uh, when you get those things from, uh, from experts across the country, I will, I will acknowledge the CDC has removed that. However, everybody involved in music and things like that are, are, are somewhat concerned. I thought we were getting closer, but this last week has not said that. So we're still, we follow it closely and, and we're looking at ways in which it's gradually reopened. We've not been closed. I'm going to say that. 
I do want to say that there's been a lot of great ministry that is happening. And so many of our churches report there are more people engaged in worship now than there were before, uh, before we stopped gathering. And many of our churches and some churches have had no financial difficulties. In fact, they've seen an uptick in generosity. So we, what we believe there's been a lot of imagination and a lot of vision and just a lot of faithfulness and continue to be the church and community. So I'm very grateful to all of you for that. Thank you. And, you know, I'm, I'll be obviously talking tonight about passing the baton with our metaphor because you're in the changeover zone. Uh, and <clears throat> this is a little different in the webinar form than, than our uh, live workshop. But given that none of us have ever gone through anything like this before, not only with COVID-19, uncertainty about the denomination, and then the heaviness on our heart and our soul right now, right, about uh, about social justice issues and what's going on. I mean, friends, don't be surprised if you drop a baton or two along the way. Um, nobody's going to get this all right all the time. Uh, so let's just grant each other a lot of grace uh, when we're doing this. I lay folk grace to your pastor leaving and your pastor arriving. I'll be asking the pastors to do the same thing. So nobody's going to get it all right. <clears throat> but we're going to have a great time and a fun time trying to, and I will hope to get you started uh, with that tonight. So uh, you did receive, uh, most of you received the workbook, and, and Liliana has uh, put it uh, there in the chat room. I really encourage you to download it. Uh, if you had an opportunity to print it out, that'll be helpful, but I, I want to go through the workbook uh, while we get started here. So um, the workbook is uh, 26 pages. Now relax, we're only going to go through two or three pages tonight. Uh, but I, I want you to have it in your hand so you can see what, how we train uh, uh, others in the process. Uh, so it's in sections, like there is a section just for DSs. Um, and we use that when, I, when we work with cabinets. There's a section for the pastor saying goodbye. How do you say goodbye and set your successor up for success? There's a section for the pastor arriving. You know, how do you get onboarded and, and get off to a running start? And the, but tonight, our focus is the section on the role of the local church. So that's what we'll be focusing on. Now, that 26-page uh, workbook includes 10 pages of resources. And I really want to encourage you to use those resources. So the first few pages you'll see are a list of names. These are lay people, uh, SPR committee chairs, church leaders, and clergy who have successfully gone through the changeover zone. And um, they represent churches of almost every type and size and setting uh, that you could imagine. So if a couple of weeks down the road, if you feel like you're spinning your wheels or things aren't going right, feel free to contact any of those folks. They are more than happy to share from their own experience. So layperson to layperson or large church to large church or smaller membership church to smaller. I, I tell you one of the, one of the great things, uh, I want to, I bet you've just seen this too, that's happened as we deal with COVID-19 is I have never seen our churches more connectional than they are right now. And all these are folks that just say, Hey, let us help anybody you're working with. So you can contact them and, uh, and I'll be sharing you some specific examples in a little while. Also in the workbook resources, it will direct you to, uh, to, uh, to our website. And on that website, we have uh, dozens of videos, uh, real live videos that churches have just used recently or the last year or so uh, to introduce their new pastor. And also to uh, share with you in video form how they've figured out how do you pass the baton virtually. And uh, you can go on those. Now, the, the idea isn't for you to copy them, but uh, again, I hope it will stimulate your own creativity. Our churches have already, as the bishop alluded to, have been so creative. So let's, let's just, don't let this COVID-19 thing, don't let this, the issues in our, in our world right now, stop us from having a great transition. It's so important, especially when there's other uncertainties Let's minimize the uncertainty about saying goodbye and saying hello. Uh, and then you'll see also in the workbook, uh, uh, pastors, uh, a lot of resources that we have used that churches have shared with us 
to help you throughout the entire first year of your appointment uh, to be able to get off to a good running start. So I really encourage you to take advantage of the, uh, of the resources in there. The inside page has a little information about me, but many of you know me. I've spent my career in the North Texas Conference, and it's really not about, um, it's not about me. It's about you, and it's about your churches. Uh, so I'll be directing my work tonight uh, toward the SPRC chairs and the laity. Uh, we did invite clergy to join in so clergy would know what we're telling the churches. And then Thursday, I'll be spending time uh, specifically with the churches. So I hope you're here because you're willing to say right now that anxiety, uncertainty, and frustration, that's just where we are visiting right now. We live in hope and faithfulness. And we're gonna have a faithful and hopeful and great transition. We're not gonna just settle to become victims of what the world is handing us. Can I get an amen? So just to get a start on that, there's one of our very favorite um, commercials from a few years back. I think you'll remember it and I hope you'll enjoy it. Take a look. Whoa. Father, why can't we have direct TV like the McGregors do? We're settlers, son. We settle for things, like having cable instead of direct TV. Hey, Jebediah, how's it going? Working the land, hoping for a fertile spring. All right. So we have to live with lower customer satisfaction? I'm afraid so. Now, go churn us some butter, boy, and then make your own clothes. Yes, sir. Don't be a settler. Yeah. Get rid of cable and upgrade to direct TV. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. Now, come on, that's funny. Now, obviously, I'm not here to ask you to upgrade to direct TV, uh, but I am here to ask you to up your game, to say, let's not be settlers. Let's don't settle for the way we have done this in the past. Let's don't settle to become victims and just say, well, let's see what's going to happen, and, and we've got an easy out if things don't work well. Let's don't be settlers. Let's take charge of this be very intentional and come up with a course of action. And by the time we end tonight, I'm actually gonna help you and hope that you will, that you will um, join with me to come up with a written plan of action to say goodbye to your current pastor and hello to your new pastor to get you, uh, to get you started. Now, the word here is flexibility, right? Because um, as the bishop mentioned, some of our churches are doing things differently in terms of when they can be live and in person, when they, ha when they have to be virtual. And I'm very much aware, uh, lay folk, that you are here this evening and you're wearing two hats. One is the hat that say goodbye to a pastor that hopefully you have come to love. And the other is to say hello to a pastor that you will come to love. But not only are you wearing those two hats, unlike ever before, you're wearing that hat of saying, how much of this can I do live in person? And how much will I have to do virtually? So you've got a lot swirling around and I'm gonna to try to address as much of that as I can in our limited time. So we talk about uh, passing the baton um, because um, we just find this is the greatest, uh, easiest metaphor to use. Now, in some of your settings, uh, your DS may have handed uh, your bishop, I mean, your, your pastor a, a baton when they, uh, uh, when they were uh, talking about their appointment. But because of COVID-19, that may not have happened this year. When we talked about passing the baton, Jay, we've had so much fun over the years training churches to use that baton. Typically, here's how we would say to do that. Um, so we'd say, look, um, on the first Sunday uh, that you're gonna start talking about being in the changeover zone. Now look, here's, the, the, here's what the changeover zone is. And, and I encourage you to use the language of changeover zone and passing the baton. Because we are changing culture, whether we want to or not. And culture travels on words. So um, the changeover zone in a track meet is a distance. You've seen the, very, the multiple lanes along the track where the runners pass the baton. And in that changeover zone, in a track meet, it's, it's distance, it's, uh, it's about 20 meters. And, and a good runner, she can run those 20 meters in seven steps. And so we built our work, our book, the changeover zone, our workbook, everything is on seven steps to having a great transition. 
in the church, it's not distance. It is a matter of time. Now, ideally, if the cabinet wasn't uh, dealing with all that it's been dealing with this year, ideally, the changeover zone is a matter of about 100 days before there's a change of pastor and the first 100 days after your new pastor arrives. So we'll be talking about some of the things you can do uh, to get ready to receive your new pastor. And we'll also be talking about things you can do to help your new pastor get on boarded. In the track meet, there are four main players, as we mentioned. You know, there's the runner with the baton, the runner who's going to get the baton, the on-the-field coach, and that fourth ever-important party in the relay is the crowd, the people who are supporting and cheering and doing all they can to make it happen. In the church, the four players are these. Your current pastor, who has the baton, your new pastor, who's going to receive the baton, your on-the-field coach, who's the district superintendent, and the crowd, the church, you good folks who really are behind the scenes in so many ways and up front in so many ways, but you're the ones who really make our churches happen. So we want to be sure that you feel like you've got a good understanding of what you can do to help make a great transition and that it isn't just a matter of the two pastors uh, working it out, but that you have a very important part. But because of COVID-19, things have changed. We used to ask the pastor on the first Sunday when you're in the changeover zone, stand up, hold that baton, talk about I'm passing the baton to my successor. Pray for the successor, pray for the community, pray for the mission field. And while you're praying, actually take that baton and pass it through the congregation from hand to hand to get as many hands being a part of this transition as possible. Well, that's, that doesn't make good sense today, right? So we have to figure out other ways to pass the baton in a visual, metaphor, image-driven way that creates a great culture. So today we've got to figure out how to do it with temporary batons. So take a look at this one church. This is a church I worked with in Virginia. They started the process feeling like they were going to be passing that baton throughout the congregation. The pastor was going to take the baton down to the children's area and every child was going to touch the baton. They were going to be taking the baton to the hospital so the hospital patients and doctors and nurses could have a hand in passing that baton. It's great imagery, but probably won't happen this year. So uh, here's what they did. They were so shocked when they couldn't meet, just like you were, remember, when you first got the news. But instead of living in frustration and despair, they just visited there for a short time and they said, we're going to live in hope and faithfulness. And so they turned their creativity loose and figured out ways to virtually pass the baton and talk about passing the baton. So take a this, uh, look at this video. Uh, now, please um, don't, uh, uh, don't judge this video on its professionalism or its perfection. This was something they did in a week, but judge it on its creativity and its messaging. Take a look. Jesus, we fix our eyes on you with grateful hearts. We give thanks for Pastor Ralph and Pastor Kelly and their faith and fruitful ministry among us with hopeful hearts we welcome pastor brad and pastor mandy and the possibilities for our ministry together together we run this race of faith looking to you jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith Amen. Amen. So you see the idea 
Now, I want to tell you a little bit about this video. Uh, first of all, you might have noticed that this was the staff saying goodbye to the pastor. And, um, and each baton, just the old discarded paper towel roll, was decorated unique to each staff member. And uh, they are gifting their pastor, who's retiring, with all their batons, with messages written to him about his future. Not only are they doing that, but they're sharing with the congregation how they're doing that. So that a first time guest senses what a great group of people these are. What a wonderful group of folks that make up this staff that are so creative and care so much about their pastor. So, um, so they, this is a good way to say goodbye. Now, I don't know how you're saying goodbye to your pastor, but what we want to do is keep in mind the first time guests who may be, uh, when you are able to be in your sanctuary, who will come or just happens to stumble onto your online presence. We want to be doing things that show a first time guest how thoughtful you are and what a great group of people you are. So um, now, and you notice that they also issued a challenge to the entire congregation because we wanted to do something fun together. And virtually every group in the church has jumped in. We have many of their videos on our website, but this one I want you to see, this is the youth group, how they pass the baton visually, to use the metaphor, passing the baton. And um, so again, I wanna ask you, just take a look at this. Now you don't know these kids, but imagine you're in the church and you know who the teenagers are, and you see the teenagers, instead of sitting on the sidelines, being disconnected, almost victims of what the heck is going on in our world today, instead, they said, we are gonna be active participants. And imagine that you're a first time guest, and you happen to have a teenager, and you see how much this church values its teenagers. So take a look. Who are we gonna go? You wanna go? Now, again, um, I hope you're not looking at that saying how cheesy, how crazy, just to put yourself in the place of people in the church. How creative can your church become to pass the baton some way, even if it has to do it virtually? Let's, I, I know everybody's immediate response to all that was going on is pretty depressing, but we wanna live in, you know, I mean, in, in, we wanna live in a response that's faithful, and believes that we can, we can uh, overcome whatever is handed our way. Now, I'm going to uh, begin now to share with you some specific techniques, keeping in mind that word flexibility. So about how you say goodbye and how you say hello. So um, 
let me just preface that by saying, first of all, uh, because I work all over, uh, uh, I can't know exactly what the current protocols are for the North Texas Conference. So if I say anything uh, that doesn't, that you don't think seems to quite align with the current protocols of the conference, however they've been communicated to you, or they don't align with something perhaps that your district superintendent might have told you, uh, if, if they don't align, go with your DS. Your DS knows you much better than I do, knows your church setting and its situation. So if it's not quite the same, just go with, your, with what your DS has to say. So would you turn in your workbook, if you have it, to page 15, um, and you'll see our action plan quadrant. And I'm gonna ask to start doing a little work right now for just a few minutes. So it looks like this, and let me uh, just kind of go through this uh, with you. Um, it's on page 15, and uh, as I said, <clears throat> I, I really wanna be sure that we don't spend an hour and a half together. And, and when you leave here, it just seems like it's wasted words. I, I wanna have a real plan of action. Now, I can't possibly know your setting, but you do. So start with the challenges. What are the challenges in front of your church right this moment? Now, all of us are gonna have some shared challenges, right? COVID-19, uncertainties about the denomination, the absolute soul heartbreak of what's going on in the world today, in our country today, about justice. So uh, we've got those challenges, but what are your unique challenges? One church told me uh, their challenge was this, um, that uh, they've had a pastoral match that was not good, things have really fallen apart, and, and, and people have quit coming, and, and they're not sure they have enough money to or a full-time pastor for a year. That's a challenge. I, I don't know what challenges are, but, but uh, SPR folks, lay folks, please be sure that you write down your challenges as you see them. And if you're uh, on the committee or if you're a leader in a church and you feel like something's a challenge, get it to your SPR chair so, so she or he can get the challenges done. What are the goals of your transition? Now, uh, again, uh, I had one church that said, you know, here's our goal. Uh, our pastor has done a brilliant job. She's been with us for a number of years. The church has prospered. She's gone on to another appointment. Our goal is to have a transition which, uh, and a new pastor who can build upon the momentum that we have. I don't know what your goals are. Uh, as that other church told me, I, we, we just have to have some unity and, and somebody to bring stability, we, we have to stop the bleeding. That's our goal. What are some of the goals of your transition? What do you need to accomplish right now and in the long term? What are the opportunities in front of you right now? Opportunities to reach your mission field, opportunities to strengthen your church, opportunities to actually reach new people. Now, I hope in the remaining hour I have, I'm gonna be sharing with you some opportunities that you would wanna write down, like how do you pass the baton? What are some opportunities to pass the baton in a way that will just shout out who we are as a congregation, our creativity and our uh, intentionality? And tonight, especially, I'd like for you to start with making plans, concrete plans. Remember, I said ideally the changeover zone is 100 days before the change of pastors, but that can't happen this year, right? I mean, uh, you're, uh, you're, you're going to have very limited days, so what we want to do is be sure that we don't waste them. So would you just, in that plan, just draw a horizontal line about midway through. As you look at it, on the far right side, put the date that you expect your new pastor to begin. On the far left-hand side, put this coming Sunday's date, because we want to start this week. We don't want to waste any Sundays. And then just put a little uh, slash, a vertical slash for each Sunday so that you can, uh, together, you can look at your church calendar, the, uh, uh, the calendars that people operate in your community, and you can know what's coming up each and every Sunday. So you can plan either to leverage what's coming up or work around it to say goodbye 
and to begin to say hello. Now, as even as we talk the rest of this evening, if something comes to mind, just write it down. Get it in, in action. Now, SPR chairs, I, I, we recommend that the, if you have not yet done this, the very first thing to do, I, to, to do it this week, is to put together a transition team. Now, hopefully you already have that, but if you don't, this is a good time. Just start it. One of the challenges is we don't have a transition team. Some churches, many churches, just use the Staff Parish Relations Committee to be the transition team, and that will work. We recommend, however, to expand it a little bit and have a transition team that would consist of a couple of representatives from the SPR, uh, uh, a couple of, if you have staff, a staff member or two on it, other leaders in the church, influencers who love the church, people who are pretty detail-oriented, because your transition team will take what uh, the goals and the opportunities uh, that you're going to identify in the uh, SPR committee, and they're the ones who would actually carry out the plans. So you, we want to be sure that nothing falls through the cracks. That's the first thing. And then within a week uh, or 10 days at the latest, I mean, it's kind of late here, as, as the bishop acknowledged. I mean, it's just been a tough year. So uh, please get with your uh, current pastor, your incoming pastor. I think most of you know who your new pastor is going to be. And your, uh, your transition team and compare notes so that everybody's on the same page about how you're planning to say goodbye and how you're planning to say hello. Does that make sense? Now, if it doesn't, let me know in the chat line and, uh, and Owen can stir, stir questions. So I want to ask you to be doing that. Um, and so, so we don't just stop with this evening, but just as quickly as you can get together to put, uh, to put your uh, transition team in operation. So what are the challenges? goals, opportunities, and your plans. Now here are the three big things that you can be doing um, right now to get started, to say goodbye in the best possible way. All right, you ready? If you wanna write these down somewhere, the first is this, your attitude, your attitude. Now I know that seems trite, you've probably heard it in other kinds of things, but when, when my experience as a church consultant working with hundreds of churches all over the country, I can tell you without a doubt, the single most uh, common thing that torpedoes a church's mission is an attitude that's negative in the congregation. So you, there's so many things you can't control. You can't control, uh, you couldn't control uh, you know, COVID-19. You have very little control over what our denomination's gonna do. There's so many things you can't control. And if you focus on those, you will fall into despair and frustration and you'll be reacting. But you can control a few things. And if you'll live in those, you'll be responding. And the most important thing you can control is your own attitude. So I'd like to ask you, if the bishop was still with us, I'd be asking him to join, uh, you know, for you to make this covenant with the bishop. Uh, uh, I, I don't really have any authority, but I'm going to ask you, would you make a covenant tonight? right here, um, that after this webinar, from this day on, not one negative word about the appointed process as it relates to your church. Friends, here's why I say that. You're, you're a leader in your church. Your negative word, your mumbling or grumbling or complaining, your negative word, when it's repeated, becomes a negative sentence. And when it's repeated, it becomes a negative paragraph. And when it's repeated, it becomes a negative page. And when it's repeated, it becomes a negative narrative. And before you know it, the narrative in your community is, oh, that church, that's where those grumpy, complaining old people are. And a first-time guest will never be a second-time guest. So let's be positive. Um, now, that doesn't mean uh, that you may not have concerns. I don't know your setting, your situation. Um, but those are to be talked about in the right place, but not ever publicly, not, uh, not, in, a, not in the hallways of your church when you can meet together, uh, not in your uh, Zoom gatherings with the congregation. Uh, so the first and most important thing is be positive. 
grant each other grace. Um, no one's going to get this all right, but together we can try to work toward a tremendous passing of the baton. Secondly is um, if you haven't started this yet, begin to introduce your new pastor now so that your new pastor is introduced uh, before she or he arrives. Now with your pastors on Thursday, I'm gonna spend a lot more time on this, but I want you as church folks to know why this is important. And it isn't just that the new pastor is being introduced, but we want your current pastor to be seen visibly pointing to that new, to the here or his successor and blessing them as the new pastor in the church. Um, so, um, um, so I hope I'm making sense how important that this, this is to be not only introducing, but blessing your pastor. So the best way, there are lots of ways to do this, but the best way is through the use of screens, especially if you're meeting, if you're live streaming your worship, it's, it's easy to, to live stream and put on your screens a good introductory video. Now, many of you may have already been doing this, but if you haven't, I just wanted to show you just a, a simple little a biographical introduction. Uh, Mandy is going to be introducing herself to the congregation uh, by video. It will be playing in their live stream screen since they're not meeting together. And the pastor will be uh, acknowledging that video saying, take a look and how excited we are uh, to have Mandy as our new pastor. Take a look. Hello there, Blacksburg United Methodist Church, both the Church Street and Edges campuses. My name is Mandy Newman, and I will be heading your direction in late June to be the site pastor out at Edges. I'm super excited to be coming your way and can't wait to um, share in this wonderful journey of faith uh, together with you guys. Um, I am an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church. I'm a wife of 27 years. I'm a mom of two kids. I do yoga, but not very well. I play the piano, but usually not for people. I love to read and go to movies and to hang out outdoors with people. But most of all, I love Jesus. And I love to share the love that Jesus has for all people with others and to be in a community, to be a part of a community where we can ask questions and learn together and figure out how we might live our faith um, in this sometimes crazy world. Um, please know that I have been praying for you all and will continue to do so and I invite you to also pray for me. I understand we'll be sharing a few of these video clips in the coming months and I look forward to doing that and I can't wait to hear and hear all your stories and meet you guys. So um, in the meantime, may the grace of Jesus Christ be with you all. So um, very simple. Uh, now, from, when we say uh, introductory videos, uh, please don't spend any money on them. Don't spend much time on them. Uh, just uh, it's time, if you, uh, if you haven't yet done this, uh, to contact your new pastor and ask uh, her or him to produce a simple video like that uh, to send to the church so that you can be introducing your, your new pastor well before she arrives or he arrives. Does that make sense? Um, again, if you have specific questions, I'll be glad to address them uh, in, in your follow-up um, follow Zoom. So first thing you can do, check your attitude. Make sure it's positive. Second thing you can do, plan now. Uh, time is very limited to be introducing your new pastor, especially for a first-time guest. Uh, a, 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 a guest wants to know that where they're going, that people are intentional and thoughtful. And they want to see a transition that is uh, targeted, and uh, and so uh, be sure that they're that they're seeing their new pastor and they're seeing their current pastor, uh, bless uh, that new pastor, that new pastor, if at all possible. And sometimes that's not possible. If you don't have time to use videos, or if your uh, if your setting doesn't allow for it, uh, we'll be training the pastors uh, Thursday about uh, using uh, selfies. So you just get lots of selfie pictures of the new pastor, the new pastors, not just the, you know, the mug shot in the hallway, but family, life, pets, things like that to be sending over every week so that the new church gets a chance to get an idea of the flavor of the life of their new pastor. 
Some churches, I work in some conferences where uh, uh, geography makes it very difficult to have even uh, Wi-Fi access, uh, but these churches haven't let that stop them. So what they do is they use uh, selfies, but instead of using them on uh, videos or uh, you know uh, on screens, uh, they just use the selfies. They send snail mail out with a little flyer that they made of our new pastor. Uh, maybe have uh, the the pictures on the inside of the worship uh, uh, bulletin cover or something like that. So don't let anything stop you. Just say you know we can do this. We, we can be creative. Just go crazy. What are some of the opportunities? that you have right now to not let COVID-19 or anything else stop you from having a good passing of the baton in the changeover zone. Is this making sense? So um, I'm aware that uh, I'm giving a lot of information uh, and you all are processing it as best you can in your own setting. I, I know again, the heaviness of everybody's heart and anxiety, people are uncertain. Um, and uh, there's, um, uh, there's a lot of fatigue in our churches. Is that right? Am I on target? I mean, you, you see a lot of fatigue. You see a lot of the same people doing the same things. People, you know, it just breaks my heart when I'm, uh, you know, when I'm online watching churches and see how good a job that they're doing to put together worship and knowing that the people who are participating are dealing with so much. And uh, so, there, there's just a lot of fatigue uh, that you have to deal with, but we can deal with it and we can energize our congregations uh, through having a great, uh, a great transition. So um, uh, be flexible. Uh, I recommend you talk to your church starting this week. Hey, we're in the changeover zone. We're passing the baton. We're going to figure out how to do it the best way we can do it um, to, to show who we are and to show our passion for doing things in a good and um, uh, in a good way. Here's the third thing you can do. Begin now, it's time, this week, uh, begin now. Uh, put this in your plans. Begin planning for the listening tour for your new pastor. So, um, so uh, the, and, and the listening tour is um, something I wanna spend a little time with Pastors tell us wherever they go that it's probably the single most important thing they do to get started, to, uh, to really get an idea of who the church is and what the church's story is and what its narrative is. So um, uh, if you would please uh, turn to page eight, just take a flip over and look at page eight in that workbook. And I want to talk about the listening tour. Now, um, the listening tour is uh, just that. As a matter of fact, we really recommend that um, you begin to talk about it and message it, market it, advertise it as the listening tour. Some churches do this. Uh, you probably have been a part of the church. You've probably have done it in years past. It's slightly different than the way that we've uh, learned to, to, to teach it. Uh, some churches do it. They call it uh, meet and greet or uh, chat and chew or something like that. All very clever. And that's, that's okay if you have to do it but you're better to focus it on uh, words that help create the culture you want to create. Listening, you want to know your new pastor is going to listen. And if you happen to be situated uh, in, uh, in or near a college campus town or a military town, tour speaks the language of that generation. So you're having a listening tour. Um, so now we're going to be flexible. I want to spend some time talking about doing the listening tour as though you can do it in live in person. And you may well be able to. The listening tour won't start until July or August, but you may not be able to, or you may decide even if you can, that that's not a smart thing to do. I wanna walk through doing it personally, live, and then how to do it virtually if that doesn't work. So ideally, the listening tour is done in homes. So uh, if you're an SPR committee and the current pastor together, you would organize the listening tour for the new pastor. Now, uh, if you're a pastor and you're leaving, you're helping your church organize that, that listening tour. You won't be participating in it. The new, the new pastor will be participating in it. So the organizing is done over here 
And after the handoff, it's executed, it's done. So to get it organized, first of all, decide how many listening tour sessions that you need. If you're going to do them at homes, we recommend that you, uh, the congregation uh, be placed in small group settings that would be meeting in someone's home, um, if possible. You might have reasons to say that would never work for us. But um, uh, so you just determine how many do we need. And usually uh, what churches do is they just take their average worshiping congregation and divide it by 10, and that gives them a good starting point, how many you might need. Some churches, they'll do two or three. Uh, other churches will do 15 or 16, so it just depends. The idea isn't to get 100% of your congregation in a listening tour, but it's to get a good number uh, so that the new pastor really gets a chance to learn the story of the church. Now, if you are able to meet in homes or at a church or something uh, in July or August or September, um, we'd like to be sure that whenever you uh, have one scheduled, and when you schedule them, remember, um, SBR chair, uh, when you schedule them, you have to coordinate with your new pastor. So if you say, we're going to do one on uh, July 13th, you got to be sure that the new pastor is uh, signed off on that, on their, their calendar. So you kind of come up with how many projected dates, contact the new pastor, you all come to an agreement about which dates, where they'll be. The listening tour session is about an hour and a half. And in that hour and a half time period, uh, you have a little short time for refreshments. And then you gather around and you address uh, what we recommend are three specific questions that we'll be going over. Now, if you're able to meet in homes, SPR chair, not only are you going to help organize it, but we find it's really helpful if one of you, somebody on your staff parish relations committee or your transition team or your leadership team, you would be the Uber driver. You would take the new pastor to each session to minimize the new pastor getting lost or being late for something they can't control. Um, so you go and then when you're there, you are the scribe. That is, you'll be taking notes and I'll shortly tell you why that's so important. So when you get there, um, have a little pie or coffee or whatever, and then uh, you uh, address these three questions. Now you may wanna come up with other questions. Uh, that's okay, but be very careful about um, the kind of questions that you ask. We're not trying to invite controversy here, but people learning the church's story. We wanna send the questions to them in advance and you'll see in the resource book, you've got sample letters to send to SPR chairs uh, about um, uh, the questions. So uh, on page eight at the top, here are the three questions if you are like to fill in the blanks. Number one, what is one thing that I, as the new pastor, need to know about this church? Number two, what is one way that we are going to reach new people in this area? From the get-go, I hope you'll agree with us, uh, all of our churches, all of our pastors, no matter what other priorities you have, among them must be, we have got to reach new people. Can I get an amen? We just have to reach, that's why we're here for. And you'll get great ideas, I tell the pastors, you'll get great ideas from lay folks on how we can be very intentional about reaching new people. Number three, what is one dream that we have for our church. Now, um, you just simply go around the circle and ask that, those questions, people give their answers, and the scribe, the SPR or church representative, we, we really want you to be taking notes on their answers because the last thing we want is for your new pastor to ask a question and then have her or his head stuck down in a piece of paper writing instead of what? Making eye contact, being relational. And the reason we want to take notes is, um, um, uh, is we'll be coaching your new pastor. We really will recommend to them, but for the first 90 days, about three months of sermons, whether they're online or live, to be saying something during the worship time uh, like this, um, this is what I heard at the listening tour, because we want a message that I'm here to listen and to learn who you are, 
before I try to come in and just come in with my own agenda. But, you know, it's about you as the church, and we want to know who you are. So that's the listening tour. All right, um, now, there's a lot of material there. Uh, it's spelled out in the workbook. And again, if there's um, uh, uh, something that would be helpful to follow up on, uh, we'll be happy to do that. Now, Owen, I want to defer to you for just a minute. Um, I have a, about 30 minutes left, uh, and I want to leave a few minutes for questions. Uh, I'm getting ready to talk specifically about the role of the church, but is there any question right now that you see that I should be uh, addressing that I haven't touched on? Uh, not as much a question as much as I, I just want to reiterate that point that really uh, resonated with me the first time that I went through this which was um, people who come into your church or who are visiting your church are going to make the decision about whether they're going to stay or not, not based on the one person who may be up there, may be going, may be coming, but based on the people that are in the congregation and how they are interacting with one another. And if they see you having fun, if they see you fellowshipping, if they see you loving, then that is what makes them want to be a part of that congregation and to connect with you and, and basically, uh, have you be a part of their life and then be a part of their life. And so I want to reiterate that that is a lot harder to do in this season with COVID. Uh, but the, the cheesy low budget videos that we have seen, um, they, they were making me smile. And just that, that word that Jim started off with intentionality and, and just thinking, how can we make this fun? How can we connect? How can this help bring life in our congregation and, and, in such a, a difficult time. And so uh, I just wanted to reiterate that once again, Jim, because that's such a powerful point. Well, it is. And having fun being seen right now with, with people uh, burdened, uh, we want to be as uplifting as we can and have as much fun as we can. And, and that's, that's one of the turning points for, uh, for this. Okay, let's turn. If you'll move over to page five, I want to share with you the specific role of the church as we have learned it over the past uh, seven or eight years. Um, so uh, first is this, um, you see it there, page five. Here's the main job, SPR chair, I, I don't know, we've just learned the best way to say this is the main job of church leaders is to rally the troops, especially this year, now more than ever. So uh, like even on the listening tour that I just spoke about, if it's still in such that, uh, that you can't meet in homes, you can do the listening tour just about as effectively, just like this, by Zoom. You have the same roles where a church leader takes notes and it's done virtually. You may decide that's the best thing, but however you message it, however you decide, we, again, we want to be positive and say, this is why we're doing it, and this is how it's going to be so effective and we can have a great time. Rally the troops. We say that, and I don't mind say, telling you, we, we, we work with cabinets a lot, and, and our observation is this, that it, it is not strange for the bishop, the superintendent, even the SPR chair and the pastors involved to underestimate the level of angst in a congregation when it changes pastors. So just know it's out there. So we wanna rally the troops. So hopefully this will help uh, do that. So you see there, the first bullet is the age response ratio. And this simply means there's a rule of thumb, the younger a church, um, for instance, if you happen to be a startup, you're six or seven years old and you're having your very first change of pastors, I don't know if somebody's here like that, generally it takes more intentionality and a little longer time because the church has never gone through it before. On the, on the other hand, if you a church that's been around for a while, You've probably had a number of pastoral changes. Can I get an amen? And so you've got track record, you've got history, you've got experience. You've also got fatigue. It almost can fall into the trap of just being ho-hum. We're having another change of pastors. We're just going to see what happens. We'll get through this. We want to change the culture to this is a time for us to pass the baton. We're in the changeover zone and we're going to grow through this. We're going to do things in such a compelling way that a first-time guest will walk away saying, these are the kind of people I can hang out with. That's how a church grows. Whenever somebody has a relational connection 
to the church as a whole or to some member of the congregation, you've got a good chance for them to become a second time guest. And yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, there was a question that was lifted up by our incoming North Texas Conference lay leader, uh, Kim Brannon, about what is the role of, uh, of the laity in making some of these announcements about these pastoral transitions. The, the staff has been uh, playing a large role in, in the multi-staff churches, but what, what role should the laity be playing both in single, pass, single staff uh, churches as well as in multi-staff churches? Thank you. And who is it? Who's the incoming person? Kim, Kim Brennan from University Park United Methodist okay. Church. So a huge role, a huge role. In a minute, I'm going to show you a couple of videos about that. But uh, as much as you can, uh, like making announcements, messaging, uh, the, the more that can be done by the laity, the better. Because... Uh, uh, the, the, again, I look at this from the perspective of a first-time guest. Uh, they, uh, they really don't want to come, mostly, to be a consumer of the preacher. They want to be a producer of the church. They want to be a participant. So we really encourage lay people to be, to be central. Uh, even in my first example about holding the baton up, uh, only time it was ever held up by the senior pastor, it was the first time. After that, it's by lay people. Now, uh, it'll be different with COVID-19, but I'd really encourage you in your opportunities, I'd list what are some of the opportunities to let our lay people blossom, to unleash the passion of our laity in the congregation. Uh, you, you never have a better opportunity than when there's a change of pastors to highlight the laity. And I'll, hopefully I'll have a time to talk more specifically and show a couple of videos about that. Okay, now, um, so that age response ratio. And, and the reason we list this is because churches that have been around and have had a lot of change of pastors, unknowingly, uh, uh, those churches can, can be more fatigued than other churches. It's just, this is just something they've got to get through. So we, we uh, just be aware of that. Uh, we like to use this little example, you know, that there's uh, two really great ways to re-energize a fatiguing congregation, which tends to be older churches that have done this a lot, and it's just a transaction now for them. Uh, you know, one is, uh, you know, put this stuff in their communion cups. Now, come on, that's not really. But the other is to have an absolutely great passing of the baton, where all the energy of the church is focused on this marker moment in the life of the congregation, saying goodbye and saying hello. Uh, so uh, uh, use that metaphor uh, of the baton. Figure out a ways that you that you can use it. Rally if you're looking if you're following along, filling in the blanks of the third bullet. Um, rally around prayer. I don't know what your prayer practices are in the church, but you never have a better opportunity to focus the congregation. We're in the changeover zone. Over the next three or four weeks. Uh, let's, let's come together virtually or in person uh, to pray specifically about our pastor, where our current pastor is going, if they're retiring or going to another church. Uh, let's pray specifically about our, for our new pastor and the new pastor's family for the community. Some churches do this one time. Others will do it every week. I don't know what your setting is. That's why you want to get it in your plans. How are we going to rally around prayer? And through Bible study. Same thing. Uh, try to find a way when you can highlight either in uh, your uh, Sunday school classes, your small group setting, your online teachings, online settings, to have a concerted Bible study about passing the baton. Uh, we have one in our book. Uh, uh, Love at Weems has a number of them online uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, his work. Uh, find a character, Elijah to Elisha. Find, find somebody that you can have a Bible study on that focuses on uh, the biblical uh, uh, underpinnings and basis of passing the baton from one to the other. And the next is to highlight your identity. Again, I don't want to blow past this, but we're, time is very short. It's really important that uh, 
that the identity of the church is highlighted every Sunday so that this doesn't just become a pastor driven time and you're able to, um, uh, to highlight the identity in a number of ways. Here, here's a few. The first is this, uh, start this Sunday. Um, we'll be talking to your pastors about this as well. So that every Sunday, somebody, best if it's a lay person, uh, be standing up, it, it, it standing up or part of your own streaming, live streaming service to say something like this. This is why we exist. So you're going to have a shoe drive for the homeless shelter. That's a terrific ministry, powerful, a great ministry. Just add the why to the what. We're going to have a shoe drive for the homeless shelter because this is why we exist to help other people. Especially now, right now, where social justice issues and, and listening to other people to be highlighting our identity. This is why we exist to bring together unity and, 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 and uh, peace and uh, so highlight your identity. Um, you can never, uh, for, all of you kind of know your church's identity, but again, that first time guest, they don't. And so it's important that you highlight it. Otherwise, all the conversation and the energy of the church will be focused on the pastors saying goodbye, saying hello, and we want it to be focused on the church. You certainly don't need your new pastor to come and tell you what your identity is. You know what it is. Highlight it. Uh, make it, uh, make it uh, essential. We have found um, th this is an, uh, another great way to highlight identity, to have the laity of the church be telling your story during these Sundays of the transition zone. So um, we... Uh, we've been teaching this for a while. I want to show you a couple of quick videos. One is um, just ask right now. You start asking amongst yourselves in your church um, a couple of questions and then get quick cell phone videos. You don't want to spend any money on these. They take no time. These just are headshots. One of the questions you can always ask anybody in your church is what got you here the first time. They'll be glad to tell you. Uh, people love to tell their story, and it goes on those screens when you're back in your uh, worship setting or in your live stream setting. So uh, take a look at this uh, young lady from a, a, a church uh, in the Atlanta area. Okay, we started coming to the bridge um, probably in the spring of 2013 because we had some friends that were coming here and we heard some good things about the church and we just decided to give it a try and it's been a good fit for our family. Hey, princess. So you got, see how simple? Now, uh, that's a cute, sweet video. Just imagine in your plans that at least a couple of times between now and when your new pastor gets here or even after the new pastor is here, that not only do you have videos of the pastor, but of also the laity. It's the laity who really message the story of your church. Here's another simple question and a, a great technique. You can just ask yourselves. You could be making these videos this week and start showing them. Just ask each other, what do you recommend about our church? Take a look. This is what I would recommend about our church. Uh, we, um, we have a very interactive atmosphere where it isn't just coming and listening to somebody speak at you, but you're able to tackle the topics of the day and the questions and doubts that you have with one another in, in a setting that is um, friendly and, and conducive to doing that. So um, I really enjoy that about our church. So as you can see, very simple, uh, no money. I mean, it doesn't require any expertise. It used to be you kind of had to do lights and sounds and really have good videos, but how do people watch videos today? Well, on their cell phone, YouTube. So it doesn't have, you, you know, God has gifted us with a great way to message and let lay people tell the story of their church so that it isn't all about the pastor. You don't want to be pastor driven if you can uh, help it. So uh, highlight your identity. Here's the next R, recruit eager people. You seldom have a better chance than when there's a change of pastors to recruit new people for new positions. What are some things that you could recruit new people to do? 
So here's some, um, here, here's your phone in the blanks. Here's what churches tell us are the best way to recruit new people. First of all, make it fun. You want to be recruiting for fun. Remember right now, um, there's a heaviness in our heart. We, we want to uh, deal with anxiety uh, not, with doing some fun things together. Now, that's not to turn a blind eye to the realities of what we deal with. We have to address that. But let's look at some fun ways. So uh, one pastor that I work with, um, uh, been there for a while, the church, he's, he's leaving. Um, the church wants to say goodbye, and so they're doing what many of you, I hope, are already doing. They're, you're planning what uh, typically are nowadays called drive-by goodbye, so that they're going to do a drive-by parade to say thank you, uh, and uh, they're all decorating their cars. They also discovered this, that um, their, their pastor had a longtime hobby of collecting kites. So they recruited an eager new person in the life of the church. They just stood up or actually did it online in one of their services. They said, we need somebody who can find a source for us of kites. And this person said, I can do that. Uh, they, uh, and so everybody in the parade has a kite flying out of their window as they drive by because it connected with the pastor. It was fun. The kids and the families had a delightful time decorating kites to say goodbye and say uh, that familiar goodbye to him make it fun. Remember that youth group video I showed you where the kids, corny, silly kids, just acting like kids, um, they had each decorated a baton and they're all giving their baton to the new pastor. Now, if they can meet in person, they're going to have a time in the worship service to all present their batons. But if they can't, they'll figure out a way to have them delivered to the new pastor's house as she arrives. So, just do things that are fun and together and you're messaging it so the whole church sees what's going on and that people, especially a first time guest, they come and they say, this is a church of hope. This is a church of excitement. This is a church of fun. This is a church of creativity. This is not a downtrodden bunch of people. Make it familiar. Remember that uh, uh, in, in the congregation, almost everybody's gone through a job change of some time. People are familiar with that. So you want to be able to do things that are fun and it's familiar, it makes sense to people, and, and they can relate to it and can relate positively to it. And um, uh, and make it unforgettable. Not just the saying goodbye. Uh, like, I don't know what you could do now in your setting. Uh, maybe you can all get together and have a big shindig of some kind, but you, more than likely you're going to be saying goodbye to your pastor um, virtually. Uh, I had a young lady email me today uh, on her transition team saying she was in tears at, at June 1st when he, she realized we're getting ready to say goodbye to our pastor whom I love so much and I won't even be able to hug her. I mean, people are feeling this. So you have to come up with other ways to say goodbye. Uh, that are, you know, like the drive-by goodbye, collecting videos, collecting pictures, uh, and the same with saying hello to your new pastor. So here's some things churches are doing, um, um, you know, collecting, having everybody in the congregation send a card, just a welcome card, tell them about themselves. Uh, one pastor, I just uh, talked to a couple days ago in New Mexico in a small town, doing something that's old school, but I think in a nice refreshing way. Uh, so they're having a pounding for that pastor. You know what a pounding is where everybody brings canned goods uh, for the pastor. And, um, and, and uh, like churches sometimes do, they're all uh, tearing the labels off of the can so the pastor doesn't know what's inside, but then putting their name and their phone number on the can. So the pastor has to call them to find out what's in that can to, to start conversation, just to have fun with it. So uh, make it memorable, uh, make it unforgettable. Well, um, I've really gone through a lot of material with you. Remember, this next, this is, the idea is to re-energize your congregation, not just a smooth and seamless passing of the baton, but to accelerate growth. That's the purpose. Use this opportunity to reach new people. Don't waste this opportunity to put focus and intentionality on something that's really important. And then remember to reorient around your new pastor. 
um, your new pastor is going to be starting her his ministry with you in a completely new world. Um, try to be careful about uh, we've never done it that way before kind of responses. You're all together learning how to be a startup church, no matter how old you are, in a world that is so different than we've ever known. So uh, be cooperative, be helpful. Just reorient around this new leader, trying to do ministry in a new way. Well, friends, uh, we spent a lot of time together. Owen, uh, I'd like to close with the last video, but, but again, I want to say, is there any specific question that I uh, need to address that I haven't addressed that you would like me to touch on? I haven't seen any questions come up in the, in the chat, but I want to remind everyone that uh, uh, Jim has offered to meet with every single one of your churches. Every one of you wants it. And so email Liliana at ntcumc.org and Liliana is putting her email in the chat right now and so you can copy and paste that it's available on the conference website again that's Liliana for Liliana Runhill Liliana at ntcumc.org North Texas Conference United Methodist Church.org and she'll set up a time for your SPRC um, to meet with Jim and Jim can help you formulate that plan that you're thinking about or that you're working on or answer any questions that you may have. I see Scott Gilliland on here. He's going from being one of my parents' pastors to being my brother's family's pastor. And I know this past Sunday, they did the drive-by uh, saying goodbye to him. And I don't know what it was like for Scott, but I know it was meaningful for my parents and it was meaningful for them to be able to drive by and to, to bless uh, Scott and Reagan's departure uh, from their church. And so again, like Jim said, seeking those creative ways of the way that you can connect somehow with your congregation and your congregation connect with you in this saying goodbye, as well as the saying hello. And so I, I want to, before I turn it over to Jim to close us out for the night, I want to express my gratitude, uh, to, uh, first Liliana Ron Hill, uh, who has coordinated this event as well as the Bishop's office and getting the invitations out and a special invitation and a gratitude to Jim for, for coming back and connecting with us uh, with the Center for Church Development and, assi and assisting our churches to make our transitions uh, fruitful where they will bless uh, not only our congregations, but new people who connect with us during this season. So uh, Liliana, Jim, we thank you for this and, uh, and, and we're grateful. In sign language, this is how they give a round of applause. And so I'll invite everybody, if we can give a round of applause Thank uh, you. for this ministry tonight. So I'll turn it back over to you, Jim, to close us out. Hey, is, is, is Scott still with us? If he is, Scott, you want to comment on how it felt on the drive-by goodbye? Can you unmute? Scott, you're on mute. Sorry, I had my microphone turned down. Uh, can you hear me now? So it was very meaningful. Um, we were There's Reagan back there. So if she wants to chime in, good. Uh, we, got to, we got to do it in conjunction with uh, Reverend Dr. Jacob Kiga as well. And so, um, yeah, it was really special. I mean, if you can't see everybody and hug everybody, uh, getting to see their faces and some people decorated cars and I'm sure we made, made way too much noise for the neighbors, but um, it was a lot of fun. I highly recommend it if you're able to do that. You know what we say, uh, friends, uh, I don't know where you are and you're planning your very compressed timeline, but hey, go crazy. You have a great opportunity and a great uh, you know, time to just say, what, what can we do that's really memorable that, that, that would just uh, make a difference that people will talk about for a long time? And real, please, please, um, I hope you'll take seriously as a committee and as leaders, lay leadership, to be especially getting focused on the plans so that it won't be, it won't come across as just spur of the moment, uh, but be, be really planned out between now and when you'll be uh, saying goodbye. Well, I want to say goodbye. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, we'd just like to ask you to watch this last video as you leave. We hope this is a spiritual exercise. You know, none of us is smart enough to do this just with our own cleverness. It takes prayer. It takes Bible study. It takes letting our soul be touched by God. And uh, so we just uh, like to show this video to remind us why we do what we do. And, um, and uh, so if, if, if you don't mind, uh, you, 
just take a couple more minutes and then uh, y'all have a very great uh, good night and hope, hope this has been helpful. Thank you, Lily. I'll have an amazing passing of the baton to share God's amazing grace. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Jim. And um, just before you guys leave, a reminder, you may get an email from me, just a quick survey to see if this was helpful for you. See all of our pastors on Thursday at two o'clock and our lay people. Thank you for joining us so much. And you guys have a good evening. Yeah. God bless y'all. Right.